Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, I am stoked to be hanging out with my good friend, Justin Kwan, who just reminded me it's been 14 years that we've known each other, That's right. which is really crazy because I didn't think you were that old. <laughs> I know how old I am, but I didn't think you were that old. Uh, but it's awesome to have him back on the show. We're recording live from the Vision by Design 2023 meeting. Incredible things happening at the conference. Um, we are in our, well, depending on whether you came to the boot camp or you came uh, just for the conference in either your third day or your second day. Mm -hmm. And um, we're in the exhibit hall where all these amazing companies who are changing the landscape of myopia are all hanging out. I do want to mention both now and at the end, uh, the October, to, uh, October 2nd through the 5th, 2024, we're going to be hanging out likely in Dallas, Texas. That's the plan. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so make sure you make arrangements to be part of the Vision by Design 2024 meeting. So we're here with all of these companies and uh, hanging out. One major obstacle, Justin, and uh, you know, I'm a practitioner, you were a practitioner for years, you left practice and joined industry, mm -hmm. and automatically your objective changed from the patient in your chair to the global arena of all of these patients. Right. I think one of the obstacles that you and our other industry people really are embracing is how do we get the word of myopia mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. to all of these people? And thanks for being on the podcast. Of course. <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> so it's great to be back. Um, yeah, this task is a super tall order. And I think you can plan as much as you want. Uh, but until your boots on the ground and you're trying things and seeing what works and doesn't work in the realm of direct to consumer advertising, if you will, uh, that's where you kind of learn and pivot and try to get better at that. So I'm grateful because Cooper Vision has been at this for well over three years, mm -hmm. even before my arrival. And so we've done three direct-to-consumer campaigns. Um, I've presented an Arvo poster about potentially 19 and a half million kids with myopia in the U.S. Uh, using very careful, evidence-based measured estimation methods, if you will. Uh, so that actually amounts to about 300 kids for every OD and OMD, mm -hmm. which a lot of our OMD colleagues are partners, but they're not going to be directly managing myopia in these kids. So this past summer, we have our third go around at a direct-to-consumer multifaceted campaign, if you will. Uh, we have what are called DMA or direct market kind of cities and regions picked out. We partner with local optometrists. Uh, who have become consistent in prescribing my sight one day and other things for children uh, and try to get them on the news. Mm -hmm. uh, really get them to get interviewed, an article might be produced, they might actually end up on the news and health segment. Simultaneous to that, YouTube ads, you know, the ones that you hit skip, skip. after five seconds. Yep, uh, there's my sight plastered all over those or mysite.com uh, through SEO. But you and I both yeah. will admit that yeah. there are times where you watch it for five or 10 seconds beyond where the skip shows sure. up because you are interested. And yeah. that's what we're hoping for, Yes, right? exactly. Or got distracted and like, oh, yeah, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> something caught my eye. Yeah. So just, just to name a few of the things we've been doing uh, there, uh, but also we as a team um, at, at Cooper Vision need to translate all that awareness into action. Yeah. I think that's the crux of what we're going to talk about today. So uh, you, you actually <laughs> said something that put a smile on my face because I did some quick math because I'm not all the brightest and yeah. you actually did an Arvo poster on it. Yeah. So my thinking was about 30 million kids. Uh -huh. uh, if about uh -huh. 10,000 of us really went in, uh -huh. that would mean we'd need to see about 300 kids each. And you actually did the data oh. <laughs> to find this out. But it's a good estimate. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, this yeah. is this is a, a number that you've actually come up with. What what yeah. went into that study, that evaluation? Mainly just um, looking at a big data set out of Southern California, 61,000 kids in the Kaiser Permanente healthcare system. Yeah. Uh, they all got eye exams and there was range of hyperopia, astigmatism, myopia. And from that, we know 
urban parts of the country have more myopia, rural parts have less. There's studies that say that's about 2.6 times difference. And then you look at other census data on how many kids age 5 to 17 and what part like what percentage of the country is urban versus rural. And that's how I kind of triangulated mm -hmm. my final number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I went through a lot less work <laughs> than I got. <laughs> but yes. it's good to see that they're close-ish. And that means yeah. that 10,000 people need to be doing 300 kids. Or 25 a month. Yep. Oh, yep. <laughs> yep. So, so Justin. Yes. Um, do you know approximately through my site and other industry numbers mm -hmm. about how many eye care providers in the U.S. or North America are doing mm -hmm. myopia management? And that's the tricky part, right? Yeah, because we, right? we see what we see. There's um, a little over 10,000 doctors that are certified to prescribe my site. And actually, we've kind of removed certification in a way, not to say it's unimportant, but it's more important to start treating kids. So we do have a 30 minute video mm -hmm. that you can watch whenever you want to. Uh, and that really kind of gets you your fit set and gets you started yeah. and so on and gets you the resources from us. Um, but your question about how many doctors are actually doing this on a consistent basis. Yeah, and what is consistent is the next question, right? I think our bar is a little different than maybe our other colleagues' bars. I'll just say that for now. But let's just say consistent would be three kids a month or mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Right now, less than 100 doctors are doing that. Okay. Yeah. Th those now, numbers that's, align. That's for my site. But right, here right. at this meeting, the Ortho K uh, doctors are obviously doing like 30, 40, 50 kids a month. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, 10,000 people have risen their, raised their hands yeah, and said, I'm I interested. am interested. Mm -hmm. So let's say that some of them are doing zero, right? And then some people are doing something else besides my site. So let's just yeah. say that our pool is 10 to 15,000. Yeah. The reality of the number of those people that are doing 25 myopic kids a month is probably one or two percent. Yeah. Right. I We've agree. got a long yeah. way to go <laughs> yeah. to do that. Is the problem from your perspective? And I know we're just theorizing. Here, sure. Yeah. Is the problem that the doctor isn't a believer or that the patients aren't ready? And I know it's both. Mm -hmm. But where, where is the biggest obstacle? Where are you guys trying to? Yeah. I know you're hitting it on both fronts. Yeah. But yeah. Where's yeah. this problem? I believe it still rests firmly in the doctor's hands. Uh, I just got a text message from a sales rep today out in Pennsylvania, and she's like, you know, this practice has three or four ODs, kind of believe in it, but they feel like they're too busy or the conversation will be too long. And then they get in their own heads about presenting the price of the treatment and the value. And so I, I think after this podcast, I'm going to try to just film a separate little pep talk video and, and try to remind them of that value and how to keep it simple. And if you think about a fourth grader going into single vision, let's say Clarity One Day or something like that, versus a fourth grader going into my site, the extra time spent initially on myopia control with my site is not that much longer than a Clarity One Day because you're treating a disease, right? Yeah. And, and that part is already stacked on top of the vision correction. So but I maybe know. It's, yeah. Maybe it's not going to a single vision. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah. that they don't want to fit a kid in contact lenses yeah. because of safety concerns. Yeah, from I, the parent side. Now the doctors are still, I guess, in their head, um, they're open to ratcheting a little younger, uh, mm. starting children in contact lenses We've seen younger. that happening. Yeah, we've yep. seen that ratcheting happening. down. Yep. There's great yep. data by, yep. uh, by Visticon that yeah. they did, J&J, &J, years and years ago. Mm. Right on that, on, yeah. on that, in the yeah. safety and contact lenses mm -hmm. for kids. Yeah. So that's maybe making a dent. Yeah. Other work by you guys is showing that we are yeah. getting younger. We're mm -hmm. okay with that as yeah. a care provider. It's showing age 11 in some cases, age 10 in others, but we know kind of, that's why I say fourth grade, because that's nine years old uh, mm -hmm. typically. I think we need to get right into that nine year old. Uh, I know eight is going to be fewer and far between. I'm kind of at at terms with that. <laughs> but yeah, we need to just continue pushing the envelope a little bit and sharing great stories because that social proof, I think, goes a long way. 
So you push for eight, I'll push for five, and yeah. hopefully we'll get to <laughs> seven or eight. But Dave, we share all the time that in Louisiana, Atlanta, Chicago, there are four-year-old patients wearing my site. Yeah. 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 Four years old. Absolutely. There's no reason why it can't be done. Yeah. And I had a conversation with a doctor last night who has a four-year-old who's mm -hmm. a minus seven wow. in her own home. And, uh, you know, just the conversations for her as a mom of how do I change, like, mm -hmm. how do I put those lenses in the kid's eyes? And this is a doctor I with know. the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult to make that jump for, for kids as yeah. well. Yeah. So you've, you, you know, one of the things we talked about is how industry mm -hmm. is doing direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. Cooper Vision has really been doing a great job leading the eff effort with that. J&J uh, &J is coming into the world of myopia management in a big way. That's going to raise the bar, yes. right? That's yep. going to raise the tide. The beautiful thing is there's very little competition in the space because we're all there's 30 million kids. Mm -hmm. We're not even treating a million of them, yeah, right? Not even a million. So we've yeah, got yeah. A, we've got a yeah. lot of room, yeah. you know. Uh, we can we can get thir you know 15 million kids in my site and <laughs> everybody else still has a lot of kids they that do. they can go <laughs> yeah. for. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about this education to doctors. Uh -huh. How are you, and your role is big part of helping professionals be better, you're getting text messages <laughs> like you just said, <laughs> yeah. and you're giving these video pep talks, I, I like know. that. <laughs> what are the things that you're saying? What are the things that Cooper Vision is doing what could a doctor reach out and expect to receive from Cooper Vision in helping get them going? That was a lot of stuff. But. No, for sure. We'll kind of take it layer by layer. Um, we grew our sales reps, um, the force, if you will, from 150 to 180. <laughs> <laughs> Salesforce, you know, um, about a year ago. And we also integrated all of our specialty GP lens products into Cooper Vision. Yeah. So I don't think a lot of people know that it's just Cooper Vision now. There's yeah. no Cooper Vision specialty eye care. Yep. Uh, I think you're one of the first to hear that, actually. So when you think about 24 or so reps on that side, kind of collaborating with our 180, and then you add on top of that our myopia management specialist reps, there's nine of them, it's kind of like you have many people to turn to, which could be a good and bad thing, <laughs> but we are very good at passing the baton when we need to. If it's a more technical question or practice development, management, business development type of question, um, how to just set up fees and get started, right? And your agreement between the doctor and the parent, all those things. Uh, we have a lot of people that can support. And that's really for the doctors that are certified. Maybe they fit their niece, their son, and one other person, and then they stop for a while. We still pay attention and we're there for them. We can pick that right back up. Uh, our myopia reps, if you will, will focus more on their top 120 or so that have done about one a month, two a month, kind of goes up and down a little bit. Uh, but I spend most of my time in those that are even a bit more consistent than that. How do we take them to that next level with marquee speakers like Steve Vargo or Maria Liu, Mike McDougall on our public relations team. He's really good at, you know, telling a story, your internal, external marketing efforts, how to carve that out a little bit more, but we still rely primarily on peer-to-peer -peer education at workshops. Uh, so that's what we seek to do here at this meeting uh, and also other places, trying to go where doctors show up in case we can't fly them uh, to a place or their schedule doesn't allow for it. We want to be at the state affiliate level uh, at the OPW, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, and meeting doctors where they're, where they're at. So it's, it's a multi-team effort. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, let's, uh, let's speak to two different groups. Let's mm -hmm. speak to somebody who is here, who's doing orthokeratology. They don't do much for soft multifocals. Uh -huh. They have opportunities within Cooper Vision to utilize orthokeratology lenses with Cooper Vision. Yep. But I'm now interested in doing so more soft lenses. Sure. I'm interested in my site. How, but what support is there to get me up to speed on the clinical mm -hmm. studies yep. to get me up to speed on implementation mm -hmm. and fitting more kids. I already do INR on kids, but that's with a ortho K. That's yes. not with a soft lens. Yeah. I, I, you uh -huh. and I both would say that a soft lens probably is harder to teach a kid than an ortho K lens to For put sure. it in. To put it taking in. it out maybe a little bit. That's right, right, right? It's a give and take there. So yeah. Uh, yeah. walk me through one of mm -hmm. these very well-versed myopia management doctors, mm -hmm. how they may 
get yeah. started? Yeah, so start, you know, first touch point is that relationship with, uh, you have with the rep, either your CRT rep or your Cooper Vision rep or your, because you haven't met your MySite rep yet. <laughs> yeah, you're not yeah, doing yeah, 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 yeah. So I mentioned that 30 minute certification video, you can knock it out today while you're washing your dishes or doing your laundry. Um, and then from there getting that fit set and then the Cooper Vision rep or the Myopia rep, whoever's available. Um, and their comfort level can get you started with setting up your fees and your program. Uh, do you combine your CRT and MySite contract with the parent, right? Uh, or do you have separate ones? Because there are differences uh, in, in that process. But we really um, are trying, again, to keep it simple, knowing that many times you just need to add that six-month evaluation visit to measure that response to treatment. Um, and then hopefully you already have a system set up in your practice management, software, whether you have your CRT program and now you're just creating a MySite program, do you price those differently, the same, or do you split it out as two line items of professional fees and um, materials? Mm -hmm. So we can support along that way, give you parent education guide. Uh, really what we're coaching to, if you will now, is to keep that conversation really succinct, meaning that to describe myopia as the eye is growing faster than it should, longer than it should, becoming weaker and we used to have to watch this get worse with good news we end the high note <laughs> we have a great way to treat this and um, it's FDA approved backed yeah. by a seven-year study so to answer your question about the science that can be the science of the seven-year my size study can be covered in certification yeah it's that they're yeah. in that 30 minute yeah. video right yeah. yeah and great data seven years yeah. of incredible yeah. data on yeah. my site okay buddy so uh, uh, now uh, uh, within that, before I go to the next mm -hmm. group, um, do you guys, have you seen some best practices, if I already do it, yeah. of bringing in um, and doing a bunch of my site on yeah. keeping the cost the same? Uh, yeah. What is the keep it simple yeah. method yeah. that, yeah. and I know you're going to tell me that, well, it's whatever works best for your practice, but <laughs> I, have you seen some best practices? I have, you know, really successful doctors, some of them been on your show, uh, try to just break it down to either a hundred some bucks a month or four dollars a day, just to not initially sticker shock the family into this massively expensive program, which there is value, of course, and we convey the multifaceted benefits of treating eye health and protecting. I think mm -hmm. that word protect is what we found really is key and mm. it like draws attention. It's meaningful because we protect our kids when we put them in car seats or we put the seatbelt on, you know, mm. it's, it's protecting them as they grow. Um, so for the established ortho K doctor, one of the questions I always like to lead with is comes from the Mike Lipson paper. He mm. surveyed a lot of ortho K doctors. Mm -hmm. Maybe you responded in that survey. He, they found the median is five established ortho K a month and two brand new ortho K starts per month. So we say, hey, if you're not doing seven ortho K a month, you have room to grow your ortho K and my site. If you're doing seven or more ortho K a month, great. We never want to refit successful patients. If you don't have to change that base curve. You know it's working. You're measuring axial length and it's working. Great. It's not about refitting ortho K. It tells us, though, that if you're doing the seven, you have room for 13 my site. Mm -hmm. We're trying to point them back to that 25 number, 25 a month. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's really kind of, do you have something set up? I don't know if you have something in your practice um, where you have a dedicated staff member <laughs> that either is incentivized or trained to get every child of every adult yeah. scheduled for just an eye exam. We're not talking myopia yet because um, I've been asking every doctor I know, like, who is responsible for getting kids of the adult patients? You and I talk in the exam room, we catch up just like we did earlier about our kids. What happens when they exit the exam room? Is there a pull through that a staff member said, hey, Dr. Kading really wants your kids scheduled. I need to make sure that happens. Or do they get distracted in the optical and then scheduling the kids falls by the wayside? Yeah. Any, yeah. Uh, what do you guys do in your practice? Well, every parent yeah. who has children has children who have eyeballs yes. and they need yes. to be seen, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's a key component. You know, one of the things I, I was just talking to Sherman Tongue about this is 
Uh, we now are doing axial length on every patient. Yes. So that starts the conversation yeah. around myopia management, regardless of whether it's grandma yeah. or whether it's yeah. the aunt yeah. or whether it's uh -huh. the mom or uh -huh. the dad. Yep. And then that kind of leads us into, man, your eyeballs are huge mm -hmm. and your prescription's big. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could go back? Yeah. Well, yeah. We can do that for your kid if you like them. So you measure axial length in all the adult patients as every well. Every patient. That's really great. Yeah. And part yeah. of the reason why, and we're not promoting it per se, is we have the myopia master. So it's our auto refractor uh -huh. and keratometer. Uh, it so it's yeah. we, we're doing that on every eye exam. Yeah. So we just do profile, you know, we, we do biometry at the same time so as essentially well. Essentially, you have three or four chances mm -hmm. to talk to the adult patient if they have any kids, if they do, or the younger siblings, have they come back? Have they been lost to follow up? Because I remember, man, in Illinois, it's a mandatory eye exam before kindergarten, but after that, age five, sometimes they'll disappear for three years. Yep, yep. And like the staff need to be on it to get them back. And yeah. doing biometry yeah. on that five, f five, four, three year old, if possible, if you yeah. could, just it, it shows you the projection. And yes. that's a really great yeah. thing. We don't yeah. have mandatory eye exams in very many states. Mm -hmm. You know, Ohio is leading the charge with some of their public health efforts in, in eye exams and kids. And mm -hmm. what you guys have for this mandatory before is, is, is yeah. an awesome thing. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I no want you to hit on <laughs> what is myopia management? Like, how do I bring this in? Uh -huh. I have been fitting some kids in contact lenses, but I don't do anything. Yeah. How can I get started yeah. with Cooper Vision products? Let's say I want to do my site. Like, yeah. what are the what are the steps and resources that you have available for people? Yeah, um, I think there's still a significant number of optometrists that may not have a Cooper Vision rep simply because they live in a more rural part of the country or they don't do a lot of business with us for Clarity My Day Biofinity. That's where we're we as a resource can then skip getting a Cooper Vision rep and go directly to a myopia rep who will take all comers, uh, whether they've dabbled or started or not, uh, to really kind of drive that momentum and, and get that going with the practice again with one parent education guide that's a very nice visual. This guide is something the parent takes home. It answers seven questions, which a parent's probably already thinking about, like, said earlier, are contact lenses safe in kids? What is myopia? What is my sight? What are the eye health implications? So that guide we've worked on very diligently to again keep it very short, uh, but make sure it has all the information the parent might want. So that is something that gets taken home. The fit set is one tray. In fact, I'm going to tease this a little bit. In a couple of months, we'll have a, the same one tray, no larger, no smaller, but it's going to have 15 more slots wow. for well, 10 packs. It's incredible. Yeah. It's already yeah. a really compact. And, it's already, and it yeah, is yeah. Good. So it's we're going to have the full minus a half to minus seven range. And it's data driven, meaning you're going to have more slots in the quarter to after steps that get prescribed the most. Sure. Uh, but oh, this reminded me. Um, so a rep in your neck of the woods told me whenever he opens the MySight fit set tray, he notices a lot of the open slots that are missing the 10 packs because they're getting used <laughs> um, are minus 275 and higher, which tells us we're still not treating the minus ones as early as we should be. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great insight. It's a powerful image. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should just not have anything over minus 275. <laughs> 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 of course, people that are yeah, I know. No, I'm just I know. kidding. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, yeah. man. Um, so those are the easy steps. Just yeah. reach out where you can direct to the exactly the right person and I have full access to all of our platforms and know who's assigned to who, and uh, we're a very well-oiled machine. Yeah, and I, I don't know that I knew, because I haven't needed to reach out to you for it, mm -hmm. is the resources on pricing and yes. practices yeah. and forms yeah. and documentation yeah. to get you up all the way up and going. Um, I knew that there was implementation people, but yeah. knowing that it's way more than I thought mm -hmm. is fantastic for doctors to be aware of. And a lot of our myopia reps were former office managers, contact lens technicians, contact lens fitting opticians. Yeah. So they know what it's been like to be a staff member in the office. And we've actually done a few, what we call myopia open houses yeah. or jumpstart programs where maybe a doctor is like, I have a list of five candidates. I sort of started the conversation, but we can invite the five of them back. And then our myopia rep can work side by side with the staff to get a lens on the eye, 
maybe they go and walk around the neighborhood for like an hour and come back just to get that real world experience, how we trial presbyopic multifocals is, you know, the smiles on the kids never gets old. So I think if these candidates that are on the fence that never fully committed get a second chance and they're in a, an hour or two in the practice with other families of the same kind of myopia need, <laughs> then, um, yeah, I think that's powerful for them to share their own stories and their own challenges and get their questions answered and finally get started in treatment. So we've had done some of those open house events. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks for being <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah, thanks so for inviting me. We could go on and on and oh, on. seriously. I love talking with you. Yeah. Same here. Same yeah. here. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode. Uh, we are recording live from the Vision by Design meeting. Justin and I are getting interrupted by people coming up and taking selfies and <laughs> people taking things from the booth. It is an absolutely wonderful time. Yes. Uh, great pizza here at the, uh, yeah. at the, at the convention center. <laughs> um, so uh, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned uh, about more information of the Vision by Design meeting in Dallas, October 2nd through the 5th, 2024. Um, if you are interested in growing in myopia management, don't know where to start, check with your Cooper rep, uh, come to the Vision Die Design meeting, uh, soup to nuts information here, especially with the boot camp. Uh, I, I know you'll love it and uh, get a lot out of it. Thanks for joining me for this episode today. Take care. One, two, three, Thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review and don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes. 